ladies and gentlemen, let me present our approach to controlling dissipative structures, which can be an efficient way to improve the bearing capacity of a frame yield support. We shall discuss a dissipative uh, what a dissipative structure is and why we implement this entity to yieldable frame support, YFS for short. Then we discuss the um, importance of the reversible walk resistance, which is the best factor characterizing efficiency of YFS. We will deliberate a new approach to determine the nominal resistance of this frame. Then we can see the results of computer simulation, which open new way to control the dissipative structures and enhance efficiency of YFS. The structure of something is the way in which it is made, built, or organized. The structure disperses, dissipates the energy. Dissipative structure spontaneously emerges under random fluctuations of thermodynamic variables – pressure, temperature, volume – if the flow of energy is sufficiently intensive. For example, a laser uh, transforms electromagnetic energy into light spot, which has complex structure. A jet leaves a trail, which is another pattern of the dissipative structures. Takir on a shallow lake bottom is a result of the solar, solar energy transformation to vortex evaporation and shrinkage of the clay surface. YFAs uh, are used in a wide scope of underground opening kind of tunnels and roadways in different mines in many countries. A frame consists of several overlap segments, one, two, three segments, that are fastened by mechanical clamps, two on the left, lamp overlap, and two on the other side of the frame. These clamps facilitate intensive friction between adjacent segments and, as a result, provide the frame yield, but saving its resistance in the same time. Essential advantage of such frame is its ability to yield that uh, saves the frame from disruption and failure. Therefore, the frame surrenders room, but keeps going to resist ground pressure, which diminishes as yield increases. Unfortunately, the frame operates on the dry friction principle, which inevitably triggers a stick-slip mode of friction in the conventional clumps. Furthermore, the diagram of the frame resistance in the coordinates resistance yield is not stationary, and the resistance of the frame is impossible to predict. That is why the torque on the clamps bolts is regulated in such a way that there was a big reserve, namely no less than 0.45. It does mean the frame provides no more than 55% of the possible useful work to resist ground pressure. We may see this to compare areas of maximum possible work under red line. All this area, which with actual area under experimental diagram. According to conventional approach, a frame is tested in such a way. First, the clamps are blocked, and the frame is tested in the rigid mode until it will demonstrate signs of failure or plastic deformation. Then the maximum resistance, Fmax, should be noted, and the bolts are screwed by the torque, which provides only 55% of this maximum resistance. Let me stress, the clamps are regulated on the first peak of the resistance only. Operators hope that the frame will not increase in resistance, if, uh, its resistance to F maximum, but this situation is uncertain. 
That is why frequently, especially in underground conditions, YFS fails early before it yields to maximum rate range, which is usually 800 mm. However, YFS may fail at 350 mm yield. This uncertainty aggravates because f max maximum is assigned as a constant. Whereas it is actually distributed according to the normal law. Therefore, we proposed to compare histogram of current resistance and not F maximum, but the normal distribution of F maximum. Evidently, they may overlap and increase the risk of a frame failure, even if F nominal is 55% from F max. We simulated reciprocal sliding of the overlapped frame segments squeezed by two clamps using Flux 3D commercial code. This is a segment, two segments, and two clamps. Front end of the first segment was fixed, whereas rear end of the second one slipped to 40 cm. Despite the velocity of the sliding segments was constant, speed of the front butt of this segment fluctuated, and there was essential variation of unbalanced, unbalanced forces in tested frame section. Step of the fluctuation was 24 mm that coincided with experimental data. The more the torque moment during bolting of the clamps was the higher average unbalanced, unbalanced forces were that agreed with experiment as well. Therefore, computer simulation validated dissipative structures as an intrinsic feature of the YFS behavior and revealed its basic role in limitation of the bearing capacity. Evidently, dissipative structures should be suppressed or at least controlled. We propose two approaches to deactivate negative effect of dissipative structures. The first we should recover stationarity of the resistance diagram and stabilize at least the peaks of the resistance. Assessment has shown that this method can increase the F nominal up to 90% and enlarge the useful and irreversible work of IFS resistance by 1.5 two times. I recall that F nominal is the first peak on the resistance diagram. In the other words, we are sure that when we set the first peak to 90% from F max, the YFS will not increase and this, uh, this resistance and the diagram will be stationary. Second, Minimums of YFS resistance should be lifted up to 80%. That increases the resistance work by 3-4 times as much and bring closer it to its theoretical level, which we discussed in the start of this presentation. Computer simulation prompt that these results may be achieved due to modification of the clamp's design physical and chemical treatment of the rubbing surfaces and inhibiting adhesion between them. Development of such methods and their testing are the subject of the future research. Thank you so much for attention.